Hello everyone, my name is Chad Aiken. I am President and Chief Global Strategist for the Aiken Research Group. Today we want to go over a PowerPoint presentation that I gave to the Cranberry Chamber of Commerce and uh, it was very well received so we wanted to be able to share it with more individuals and uh, to see what you think. Um, this uh, PowerPoint is entitled, Are You Diversified? Investing in China, the Boardwalk of Future Asian Profits. The questions that we're going to go over today is what's really going on over there in China? Who are the new Chinese? Uh, how, many, how many Chinese are there and how much money are they making? When did all of this uh, change take place over in China in Asia? And why even invest in China to begin with? So what's going on over in China? Well, there is a um, individual by the name of Denise D'Souza, who is uh, born in uh, or born in uh, India, that is a author, economist, and movie director. And one time he uh, he gave an excellent uh, analogy and an example uh, called the totem pole of opportunity, and this talked about the differences in the origins between communism and capitalism. So on the next screen, uh, we just have a basic slide sh sort of showing the totem pole of China. And the totem pole from top to bottom is uh, you know, showing that the dictator or ruler in China was on top of the totem pole, whereas the entrepreneur and the small business person was at the bottom. So that you know, being at the bottom, the entrepreneur had very limited rights. Uh, they didn't have much freedom. They, they didn't have much freedom to innovate um, or to take the risk because there wasn't really the upside even associated with it. Uh, if they wanted to produce something, there might have been quotas. So it was a very top-down type uh, model which uh, did not create a lot of wealth or opportunity for the middle class uh, to uh, climb that mountain, uh, that mountain of success. Now in contrast that, when America got started, America turned that totem pole completely upside down. And that now the entrepreneur and small business person was on top of that totem pole, which meant that they had unlimited opportunity to the upside. They could uh, innovate, they could create products, and that there was nothing holding them back from earning as much as they could. Now, when America first started as well, we had a limited government uh, or Uncle Sam was at the bottom. Now uh, what that allowed is that there were uh, not many rules and regulations. We didn't have uh, Social Security taxes, income taxes. We didn't have the safety net associated with today. And the, the immigrants that came over to America, they didn't want the safety net. They could have cared less. They just wanted the upside opportunity uh, that America had and when those immigrants came to America, they enjoyed that opportunity and freedom so much that they told their other family members and friends about that opportunity and more immigrants and individuals came over to America because it was so different. Well, the next slide shows uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, the past and the present. And we know back in the 1940s, here's a, Pittsburgh, or a picture of Pittsburgh with the smog from all of the you know, steel, uh, steel buildings and the manufacturing and production that was taking place at that point in time. Now, fast forward that to today where we have the clear blue skies and you know, relatively uh, clear air pollution. Well, on the next slide, we can see the current day of Beijing. And it's a little bit similar to the Pittsburgh of the 1940s, where there was a lot of uh, industrialization and production and manufacturing, and along came with it the air pollution and the smog. Now, just as Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, through some sensible rules and regulations, cleaned up the air pollution, 
we believe that Beijing in the future will, you know, they'll have a clear future as well, just like we've had in western Pennsylvania, and in particular in Pittsburgh. Now, who are these new Chinese uh, uh, people? Well, they're just like we are in the, in the West. I mean, they want more economic freedom. They are gaining more property rights. Uh, farmers are able to produce more of what they plant. Uh, a lot of Chinese are moving into the cities. They're becoming more tech savvy with their mobile phones. They're able to uh, do a lot of business on their mobile phones, ordering products and services. And even though China's backdrop is based on communism, they are enacting new uh, regulations that are allowing for more capitalism. And it's one of the reasons why China is racing ahead and there are those here in the United States that would argue that one of the reasons that we're, we're slowing down is that even though our country is based in capitalism, we are employing more socialism or socialistic um, rules and regulations that are limiting the upside opportunity for Americans. How many Chinese are there? Well, in total, there are around 1.3 billion um, Chinese. Now, in America, there's approximately nine cities with a population of one million or more. In China, how many cities have a uh, population of at least one million people? Well, amazingly, there's 160 cities that have a population of a million or more. Now, why is that important? Well, when you have, at some point, the, the population or the masses of people with growing incomes matter if you're looking to make investments in companies that are supplying those products and services to those new Chinese that are entering the middle class and looking to spend those extra uh, uh, yuan or renminbi on those products or services. Now some regions in China are sort of merging together like in western Pennsylvania that they're creating uh, regions of 30 plus million people that are actually larger than some countries in Europe. Um, there are consumers, there are approximately 200 million consumers that are teenagers or 20-somethings in China um, that are three times larger than the baby boomers. They, they, they call these consumers the G2 in China and we all know how the baby boomers transformed America by the different products and services that they wanted, they needed, they were able to buy. We can only imagine how three times as large of a population than the baby boomers, how those consumers in China are not only going to influence the Chinese economy, but they're, in, they're going to influence the global economy. In addition to the 200 million baby boom, or 200 million um, teenagers, there's approximately 300 million students in China age 16 or 6 to 18. Um, now in China, education is uh, really valued and important. And what is happening is after the students are going to public school, there are private companies that are public that you can buy shares in that are tutoring companies and other schools that, are, uh, that you can buy shares in that are schools teaching Chinese students after the public school system or after the public school during the day. Now, how much money are the Chinese making? Well, um, this isn't the total population of China, but it gives you a rough indication of where the trend is. And that is they classify the affluent in China of making greater than 34,000 American dollars. And uh, with this uh, uh, statistic, it's around 3% of the population it's going to grow to 9% in, in just a, a short uh, eight years from now. The upper middle class is going to explode in China, meaning making from 16,000 to 34,000. It's going to shoot up to 54% or 190 million people. Interestingly, by 2015, it's reported that, uh, that a third of all high-end bags, shoes, watches, and jewelry will be purchased by Chinese consumers. Now, one of our objectives at the Aiken Research Group is to find those particular companies 
which we call on the boardwalk of future Asian profits, to be able to invest in those companies on, those, on, the, on the boardwalk when we have all of the new middle class entering through the turnstiles on that boardwalk over there in, in Asia. On the next slide, we've got the, the, the title of the Boardwalk of Future Asian Profits and why things are going well over in China, why the economy is performing. Well, what's happened is that they are a, a production, you know, manufacturing giant. Um, they're number one in steel, cotton, tobacco, autos, beer, coal, number one in producing gold, number one in the amount of savings that they have. Well, one of the reasons they have savings or reserves is because they are producing so much. And so when Americans are in Walmart producing, or when, when they're in Walmart buying products, they're in reality uh, making China even more profitable and gaining more in reserves. Now, in contrast that with the U.S., you can see where we currently rank. And at one point in the last 40 years, the United States was number one in all those categories now that China has taken the lead. And this isn't even the full list. Now what the United States is number one in, and that is in having $17 trillion in debt. So that the more we have to buy those products um, in Walmart, and if we are buying, and, and ironically we're borrowing the money from the Chinese savings to give to Americans to buy those products in Walmart, thus increasing the trade deficit and thus increasing the total debt in the United States. Now, for, uh, you know, sort of unfortunately for Americans, we are all co-signers to this trend and the $17 trillion in debt that basically the Chinese have not been repaid one dime uh, yet of that, of that uh, loan or debt. Now the trend of the debt in the United States is only going to grow. Why is that the case? Well, the U.S. has 10,000 plus baby boomers retiring each day for the next 18 years every day at a cost of 30 to 40 thousand dollars per retiree. Unfortunately, the the young Americans just do not have enough uh, money and opportunities to pay for all the promises that Congress has made to the current and future retirees. I mean, the young have their own problem. The young have credit card debt. They have student loan debt. They have a, a, an economy in the U.S. that is not producing a lot of jobs, a lot of good jobs for the young to be able to pay for those retiring baby boomers. Now, the, what we call the fiscal gap, and that is how much have we promised the baby boomers compared to how much we have the ability to pay? Well, that gap is the widest of any country uh, around the globe. Now, the second worst who has promised to their citizens more than what they can um, uh, produce is Greece. Now, some technical strategies that a lot of us financial guys like to talk about, and, and that is just how do you go about investing in China? Well, there are around 300 Chinese stocks on U.S. Ex exchanges that most brokerage firms will allow you to purchase. There's also ETFs and mutual funds that invest in China. There's different sectors and size of companies. There's access to China companies on the Hong Kong exchange and other Asian exchanges. There are different share classes of China stocks, uh, which makes it a little bit more confusing. There's A shares, B shares, H shares. and you know, at the Aiken Research Group, what our goal is, is for our clients and for Americans to have a, per, a portfolio cake, so to speak, is to have a layer of that portfolio have to have exposure to Chinese or, or Asian uh, stocks and companies. Now, you know, the next slide is talking about why to underconsume, to save and invest. So. This is where it all comes together in, in, in the respect of, you know, why do we want to save and invest uh, anyway? Well, you know, to underconsume today is really the only way we can overconsume in the future. And it gives the power and control for you, the investor, to choose what you want to spend 
your savings and investments on. You know, that's the ultimate control. And if you feel that you're the CEO of your family and, and if you want to help your, your inner circle family uh, without the stress uh, with spending it, you can do that. You can choose to uh, help your uh, child buy his first car or a down payment on a mortgage. You can contribute to your charity or church. How about, paying, how about being able to pay for a wedding without it being stressful? Um, obviously, college uh, is, is skyrocketing in price much more than the 1.5% inflation rate that is uh, being talked about coming from Washington. Um, you know, child's activities are another area where those prices are going through the roof. You know, one of the uh, uh, fallacies, so to speak, with the inflation with the official inflation rate of one to two percent is it's just one rate it doesn't apply for all Americans depending on your situation your personal inflation rate may be much more than uh, one to two percent obviously Americans uh, when they retire and when they have saved and invested most Americans want to travel more yeah, you may want to golf you may want to fish um, we've heard a lot about how uh, if you're financially fit, it helps your relationships with your spouse. Also, you have the choice and the ability to purchase adequate insurance to secure your family's future, as well as purchasing any life insurance to carry on that, uh, that, that future or to, to, to buy it for your family and your heirs. Now, when you underconsume and you have control as to what you're going to choose, you know, part of the reward would be something like this. How relaxing does that look? And so what we want to do is allow those 200 million Asians or Chinese to be able to buy the products and services that we have shares in that will allow us all to choose something like this if we would want to. Well, this is just a warm up. Uh, presentation to a one-hour presentation I'm going to make um, and what we're going to do is go a little bit more in depth on what we talked about today with some of the products and services that the Chinese are buying where on the growth curve when when the Chinese incomes are rising their um, their their products and their services that they are requiring are wanting change and we want to be on that growth curve to be able to own those particular companies that are going to supply that service. You know, how to buy these companies. Um, and we go over a strategy we call Core and Explore. For, for your portfolio, for an asset allocation, you know, how much of your portfolio should be invested, invested in Asia and China. And the benefits of investing overseas because by definition, you're getting the diversification of the currency along with it. And then we'll also have an extensive uh, question and answer period so that you'll feel more comfortable um, making that choice to diversify in places like Asia and, and in particular China. Uh, the time and date is still to be announced. Uh, when we have that uh, time and date, uh, we will definitely send an email out to those of you that would like to attend. A, the last slide here is my contact information. Anyone that would like to uh, follow uh, more information on the U.S. and global economy can uh, you know, log on or to link up to my Facebook page at AikenResearch.com. Well, I hope you enjoyed the presentation. I'm excited to give it, and I'm also uh, very excited to give the one-hour presentation to go more in-depth on the opportunities over in China. Thank you and have a great day.